Hey guys, what's up? This is Lindsay, and in this video I'm going to be talking to you about Andalusia. Okay, so stay tuned. So anyway, the first time I went to visit Andalusia was in 2006 when I was studying abroad. I went to El Puerto de Santa Maria, which is like a little fishing town on the Atlantic coast close to Cadiz, and actually I think it's in the province of Cadiz. Anyway, fast forward to 2007, um, I applied for the language assistance program and I got picked to go to Huelva in Andalusia. And actually my school was in the capital of Huelva, Huelva is also a province and some of the other language assistants got sent to little pueblos outside of the city of Huelva. Anyway, so I had a great time um, in Huelva, even though when I read the guidebook it just said like kind of like an industrial town that you just don't want to even bother visiting but actually living there was great there's like hardly any tourists from other parts of Europe it was really Spanish vibe I picked up Spanish pretty quickly a lot of other Spanish people tell me oh well but they have an accent you know like the rest of Andalusia but if you're learning Spanish it's not like you really hear the accent necessarily or like you can distinguish between a Huelva accent and, Andal and Sevilla accent I'm like I don't know I'm just learning. <laughs> I was just trying to learn how to say I want to eat something to eat. And, but the people were super nice there. I mean, they were way nicer than when I was in Madrid. Sorry, guys. Even though shout out to Madrid still. But in Andalusia, they're pretty friendly. I'm from the south of the United States, so I kind of gravitate towards southern cultures and other countries. So we kind of have that connection. Uh, other things I like about Huelva was that it was really close to the beach. It's about half an hour by bus from the beach, from Punto Umbria, which is like a cool beach to go to in the summertime. A lot of uh, Spanish people go there and they have like beach clubs and chiringuitos, which are little restaurants on the beach. They tend to be a little bit more expensive than your average restaurant or bar, but the food's really good. It's usually seafood. Anyway, the cool thing was it was right next to Portugal. So sometimes on the weekends we would just go for a, like one day just like a little road trip the Algarve which I highly recommend it's really cool it's like one of the like secrets of Europe but it was awesome let's see what else I love about Andalusia like Sevilla super cool Cordoba like in May they have these like patios of Cordoba which are really like pretty patios decorated like Andalus style they have the Mesquita which is like a mosque church combination and in Granada you have the Alhambra which is really awesome and then scattered throughout Andalusia, you have all these like pueblos blancos or these little white villages on the hill. Like when you think of Spain, everything you think of, you find in Andalusia, like tapas, sangria, flamenco music, festivals, like la siesta. A lot of people from Spain that I noticed more from the north, like, oh, there's no siesta in Spain. I'm like, oh yeah, there is. Just go to Andalusia, okay? Uh, usually what that means between like two and five-ish, give or take is like when most of the stores like shut down and people go home to have lunch or they go out to eat to have lunch for a few hours then they go back to work and they might work to like eight or nine or ten even it's a long day most shared apartments like my rooms like every time i shared um of an apartment with people i usually paid between 160 to 200 euros a month for like a brand new apartment with two or three bedrooms and two bathrooms at least if you want your own apartment i guess maybe three to four hundred euros a month I feel like that's on the high end, but I don't know. I never had my own studio or my own one bedroom, so I can't really tell you that for sure. But I have a friend; she has a three bedroom, two bathroom apartment. She pays four fifty a month for it. So, also another thing I noticed: I I never signed a contract when I was in Andalusia for my apartment. It was just month to month. But I found like in Madrid, most people ask you to sign at least six months contract. I think a year is the most common. Uh, I also knew of like two years or three year contract. Some cons of living in Andalusia is that it is kind of far from the rest of Europe if you want to travel to other parts of Europe. The biggest airports are Malaga and Sevilla. Also in Andalusia, the, the salaries tend to be lower than any other parts of Spain. Also in the summertime, it's super hot. Not a lot of buildings or houses have indoor air conditioning like central do you call it central air conditioning i don't know but none of them are equipped with air conditioning a lot of them have like these little boxes on like the wall like on the ceiling wall that you like control with the remote to get air conditioning but a lot of times it's just in the living room not in the bedrooms and it can get stifling i'm telling you like i could not even sleep at night i would have to sleep with frozen water bottles next to me and like washcloths with water just to like keep my body cool because it would be so hot at night also another thing in andalusia they have a really high unemployment rate for people like under 25 or under 30 or something like that like i think half is unemployed in andalusia but i also heard that you know they, a lot of people work without a contract, so it looks like there's like a lot of people unemployed, but they might be working, they just don't want to pay taxes. 
But I don't want to start a conspiracy or anything. I'm just saying. That's just what I heard. I don't know. But overall, like, other cool things you can do in Andalusia are, um, you can go to El Rocio, which is kind of like this pilgrimage in May, June. It depends on the year. Uh, El Rocio is like an old western looking town on this swampy area next to the ocean. Yes, in April, there is the Feria de Abril in, in Sevilla, which is like something you can't miss. I'm not really too familiar with the, like, P Mediterranean side of Andalusia because I lived on the other side, but... There's like Marbella, which is like this like glamorous city by the beach, Malaga, um, Almeria. Um, also Murcia, Murcia is similar to Andalusia if you end up going there. A lot of people who apply really late to the language system programs end up going to, end up, end up going to Murcia or Extremadura. So anyway, if you have any other questions about Andalusia, you can put them in the comments below. If you want to see more videos, like and subscribe. If you have, um... Any tips or anything or you want to share your experience, just write them below. And thanks so much for watching this video and have a great day. Thanks.